As the sun sets on Tulane Avenue, a stunning transformation takes place, and an even darker world emerges. They'll just walk right in front of us, the, uh, the prostitutes, bump cigarettes off of us. I don't, um, I've gotten to a point where I just accept them. We've had prostitutes attempt to solicit our customers. We've had them solicit our employees, myself. Hey baby, can you give me a ride? But despite the street's ragged reputation, some folks are risking it all with dreams of a brighter we've day. We've had plenty of people, family members say, Tulane Avenue? Why? Why Tulane? And, but then you mentioned the you mentioned the, the hospitals and everybody that sees where the proximity to the hospital knows it's a no-brainer. The catalyst for change is the two billion dollar LSU VA medical complex currently under construction. Along with that, the city plans to spruce up the avenue with a ten million dollar streetscape investment. What we weren't counting on was the, the prostitution and the, the drug dealing and all the issues that we have with the motel. The Capri Motel and the Suites Inn have been identified by the NOPD as magnets for criminal activity, including prostitution. Yeah. Very, very happy, very exciting. And the city cutting up and then uh -huh. Yeah, very Sui good. Sui Chang and Tony Chen own the Capri and claim to be excited about the changes coming to Tulane Avenue. Yeah, beautiful city. Yeah. I will try to make it again. We run this hotel, it's 24 hours. It's so hard, it's so difficult, okay? You know, with support and local people, workmen, we charge the price, it's low price we can. After receiving multiple complaints about the Capri, Councilwoman Latoya Cantrell became one of the motel's biggest boosters and is confident in the owner's plans to revitalize the property. They want to make it very clear uh, that they want to do the right thing and they have been doing the right thing. They have placed new signage, just kind of giving you the rules and regulations. This is not an hourly uh, uh, motel. It doesn't rent by the hour. The, uh, the owners of the Capri came in to eat about... Uh, Close to a year ago. Oh yeah, probably a little bit over a year. Right when we had and, and I kind of alluded to the fact that, hey, you guys are... You guys are making it tough on us, and they just they just kind of laughed it off. We just we just do your job. We're not police. We can't chase people out. You know that's me. We believe that everyone matters, and until we reach out a hand, uh, we cannot be judgmental of anyone. Because it's not about putting the burden a uh, hundred percent on the property owner. It's about a partnership. We had one incident where a prostitute was soliciting someone right in front of the restaurant. In front of the glass. In you can see glass, her from, from here if you were looking. Lifted her, the back of her skirt to where everyone in the restaurant could see what was going on. As uh, soon as she lifted her skirt up, I ran outside and said, you got to get out of here. And she said, this is a public sidewalk. And I said, well, then I'm just going to have to call the police. And then she spit on her window and walked away. And then I still called the police and she interrogated by the police and, and then they tried to, to frisk her and she bit one of the police officers. So she went to jail. Party and have fun like it sounds. Party and have fun. Was, what does that cost? Huh? Oh, you got no cop in there now. No, I'm not a cop. Um, I'll try to work with you. Can you work? But change can't come fast enough for battle-weary residents who say they still have hope for the future, but the present is slowly breaking their spirits. When I first came in, um, I sat back and saw that and saw the activity going on, saw the uh, prostitutes, saw the drug dealers coming back here. These girls, they look like babies, 16 years old. So we have sympathy and we look and they're all drugged out and selling their bodies. And we just sit there with uh, compassion for these young ba babies, is what we call them. And it's very sad to see this. Um, started calling the cops, but after a while gave up calling the uh, cops. Finally, I went before the board. Oh, there goes one of our neighbors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they coming from the two hotels around the corner. But I know that's where they're coming from because they stay at this one right here. 
One time they had a truck over there and they had four young college students and one hooker. And she pulled down the clothes off, over the and I stopped her. I said, oh no, not out here, not out here. They had to leave them in the front of my door. Uh -uh. I have grandchildren over here. To better understand the secrets of the street, we approached two young women hanging out at the Sweets Inn on a Wednesday evening around 10 p.m. Hey. And do you know how, how much is it to stay here? 60. 60? Okay. That's it. After a few minutes, the conversation turns to business. Yeah. What do y'all do around here? What do, what's that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Just wanted to see what's going on tonight. I don't know. No, no cops. <laughs> I don't know. Just figuring out what's happening. I don't know. I don't know how it works. <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to figure out how it works. Fifty. For what? Like. Pauline and Stephen Patterson, owners of Finn McCool's, plan to open another bar called Treo. And their friends tell them they're absolutely crazy to try to open anything on Tulane Avenue. Well, it was funny because we didn't know anything about the motel when we bought the, the building. It's only through being here that we've seen some shenanigans going on. Yeah. You hear about it, but unless you're on the street, you don't see it. Yeah. And whenever you're on the street, how blatant it is. It's amazing that it's been allowed to go on.